These movies are, wait for it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fucking insane. So I know I'm late to the party, a few years, but I did finally watch the first two Terrifier movies, and I wanted to talk about both of these movies in this video because I have a lot of thoughts about them. Starting with the fact that I do want to say Art the Clown might possibly be creepier than Pennywise. It's a very close call. So let's start with Terrifier 1. It follows a couple of friends who are partying on Halloween night and end up running into a creepy man who is dressed up like a clown. I think one of the most surprising things about these two movies is the insane and unnatural amount of calm that people have when they first see this guy. In the first movie, these two friends are sitting in this restaurant and Art the Clown comes walking in with his big huge bag. You're not really sure what's in it and he doesn't say a damn thing. He just sits down and he just stares at them. And the one friend is not at all bothered by this. One of the friends is like, oh my god, this guy's creepy. We need to possibly leave. And the other friend walks up and literally takes a photo with him, touches his hat, gets all up in his business. This woman was not afraid. Possibly that's because this was Halloween night. But either way, even if it's on Halloween night, if I see someone acting like this, I am steering clear of that shit. I mean, how many harmless clowns do you actually know that have sharpened, spiky, bloody teeth? I don't know any. And I know some clowns. Okay, I'm friends with some. So here's a warning to everyone that's going to be going out and celebrating Halloween. If someone is walking around and they are just acting extra strange, just extra creepy. Just steer clear, okay? Steer clear. David Howard Thornton does a fantastic job playing Art the Clown. He has no speaking lines at all, and yet his presence is huge and very loud. And I'm not just talking about all the screaming that his victims are doing. He's able to creep you out with just his expressions. Like Tom Hardy's Bane, a lot of this performance lives in this guy's eyes. His smile is definitely unsettling too, but a lot of it is in the eyes. This guy's definitely definitely a legend. Art the Clown is for sure going to remain synonymous with fear in Halloween and just scary clowns. I think part of the reasons these movies got so popular is the insane amount of gore and the marketing that talked about how people were getting so sick to their stomach that they had to leave the theater. People were literally vomiting. You know, that's what they claim. I think that that's all marketing and it's very impressive marketing. It actually does pique your curiosity and it works. It worked on me. I watched these movies because because I've heard so much about how gory it is and just how hard it is apparently to finish the movie. And I'm happy to say I finished both of these movies like a champ. I didn't throw up once. These movies are absolutely quite gory. The thing is, I think a lot of the gore just looks fake. And it is fake. You know, this is rubber prosthetics that they're doing bloody stuff to. So that is the reason that it didn't gross me out to the point where it did some other people. It just looks a bit too fake for me to truly take it serious. These movies are made for the people who are in into the body horror genre. They want that gore. They want the disgusting amounts of corn syrup and blood. They want to see people's heads getting smushed between two hands. They want to see some gross ass shit. And that's what these movies are selling. They're made for your goth friend. You know, the friend that you have that still writes in a journal. Do you have a friend that does that? Do you should tell them about this movie, these movies, because I think that that friend is going to really like it. Maybe even come up with a new journal entry. Part two follows a brother and sister. Once again, taking place on Halloween. And the brother, I have to say, in the beginning of this movie, he started out seeming like a creep. I was thinking, oh my gosh, is this going to be a young Art the Clown? Is this going to be a budding serial killer? There's just something strange about this kid. But it turns out he's odd because he's researching Art the Clown. He's heard stories about Art from his dad. He found his dad's notebook and he feels like there's something going on and something very real. And that's why he's doing this. And silly me, while I was watching this movie, I thought, okay, this this is a prepudescent teenager. This kid is for sure going to be safe. They're not going to have a serial killer clown attacking a kid. I was wrong. He attacked that kid. What the fuck? Why don't people ever stick around to make sure the killer is dead? It's not just this movie. It's all horror movies. Nobody sticks around to make sure the killer is truly
truly dead. These people need to be more like the girl in Jeepers Creepers. Run that son of a bitch over several times, put his head in a meat grinder, make sure there is no possible way for him to like regenerate or anything like that because this is horror movie 101. If you don't completely destroy that body, it's probably coming back to life. The director of these movies, Damon Leon, clearly has a love for nostalgia and the past. Everything about these movies feels old, but not in a bad way. In the sit back and listen to a song that makes you think of high school kind of way. The sound direction, the build up, the gore, it's all really well done. And these performances are also quite exceptional. You know, they're on par for a horror movie. I have to say movies that are this gory for me don't have a high rewatch value because you get so disturbed, so disgusted that you're like, why would I want to go through that again? But you know, you know, there is some horror movies that I have watched more than once. I have for sure watched Freddy Krueger stick that woman's head through that TV. Or I guess I should say she was a girl. That girl's head through the TV multiple times. So I'm not saying that I won't rewatch these movies. It's just unlikely considering... It's just so gross. It's truly impressive how terrifying Art the Clown really is, considering this guy has no lines. He's basically a serial killer clown mime. He does not talk at all. It's all in his face. He'll point, he'll laugh, he'll gesture. You can tell that he is just a very interesting character. He's just very haunting and so disturbing, and David Howard Thornton really just knocks this performance out of the park. This guy is going to go a long ways. I'm going to rate both of these movies a 7 out of 10. Now, before you jump down my throat and say, those are horrible scores, I'm going to tell you, that's a 7 for me. And that is because I just don't think that gory movies that are this gory for me are ever going to be a 10. And if you want to be a 10, you need to have more than just the gore. You need to have an excellent story wrapping around the gore. The gore should be added on to not the main focus. And in these movies, the gore is clearly the main focus. The story comes second to the gore, and that's why these movies are a 7 out of 10. But they are still well worth watching, especially if you're into that Halloween spirit and you're looking for something extremely gory. These movies are going to scratch that itch for you. And by the time you're done watching these movies, I bet you'll have some fun discussions with your friends about who is scarier, Pennywise or Art the Clown. Like I said, it's close. That's my thoughts on these movies. What did you guys think of these first two movies? I haven't seen the third one yet. As soon as I do, I will review that one separately. But please, give me your opinions. What do you guys think of these first two movies? Do you like them? Put your thoughts on that in the comments and let me know. Did you like this video? If you did, hit the like button. And if you want to hear more things from me, subscribe to this channel, y'all. Later.